it's curious that seasonal affective disorder was originally described um, in, in North America. In fact, Washington, D.C. is not that far north. It's like the middle of America, more or less. And I remember asking a Scandinavian colleague early on whether seasonal affective disorder existed in Sweden. And he responded, I thought, quite wittily when he said, either nobody has it or everybody has it. And initially there was a lot of interest in seasonal affective disorder in Sweden. And I remember going to visit Sweden and sitting in one of their light rooms. It was this beautiful room with light reflected off every wall and off the ceiling. And we even had to wear these white surgical scrubs and boots so that nothing would do anything other than reflect light. And the whole thing was this sort of beautiful white glow. And I felt better just after five minutes of sitting there. They never really took to these light fixtures or light boxes, which we have used more commonly in the United States and which have been used in the United Kingdom and elsewhere. So there was a lot of interest at that time. But I think one of the problems is when you recognize the problem and say this exists and a huge percentage of people have the problem, then if you've got a socialized medical system, you are theoretically responsible for now treating the problem or providing funding to treat the problem. So at this point, I would say, if you asked a Swede, is there anybody or does SAD exist in Scandinavia, depending on whether they're responsible for funding it or not, they may once again say either everybody has it or nobody has it.